Greetings. Welcome back. It's Eric Back, a naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher and formulator of the Candida range of dietary supplements. This is another video in the series of Helicobacter. We just did one previously on Helicobacter treatment, how to treat naturally. We've done other videos on you know, how to prevent getting it, risk factors, testing, diagnosing, the causes, all this sort of stuff. So this is a whole series on H. pylori. So if you just come in and watch this video, please be sure to watch the other videos as well. So we spoke briefly about the diet in the previous video, natural treatment. So I've just spent about a good half an hour looking at different blog sites uh, on helicobacter treatment, the best diet, and some of the information I've seen is just crap. It's just absolute junk. I don't know how people can put this stuff up on the internet, you know. One website actually said it's perfectly okay to drink a little bit of beer if you've got helicobacter. Another website said that you can eat copious amounts of fruits. Is it any wonder people get all screwed up and they, and they come to me and they read all this ridiculous advice? There are so many people out there who think they know about helicobacter, but how many patients have actually treated with this condition? How many people have they spoken to who actually treat this condition for 30, 40 years, you know, a long time? Some of the doctors, uh, colleagues I have, have been treating helicobacter uh, the moment it was discovered, you know, right back in the 80s, and they've been looking at the best ways of eradicating it. So the information I'm going to share with you in this video is quite important, and it's based on, on my experience with Helicobacter for uh, over 20 years, but also experiences uh, which I have learned and knowledge I've gained from people who've been in the business a lot longer than me. Okay, So there is no... Um, clearly defined, clear-cut diet for Helicobacter pylori. Let's just get that right at the start. There is no like magic diet that's going to cure it. And as I mentioned over and again in my previous video, you will not cure um, Helicobacter with a pill alone. You need to work with a diet plan. Okay, so you need to eat certain kind of foods that are conducive towards building you up. The most important thing to explain at the beginning with Helicobacter food uh, choices is you need to obviously avoid the foods that are aggravating you the most. So the foods that make you feel sick in any way, you need to push them aside. And I want you to be intelligent about this. And in fact, get a piece of paper and write all the foods you like to eat on a list. Okay? So you've got a pad like this. You write down all the foods here. Ding, 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 ding. You write them all down. And then what you do, all the foods. I mean, we talk cucumber, um, Budweiser beer, um, Hershey's chocolate. Xanax pills, you know, I'm being facetious here. Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know. But if you do like treats or naughty foods or, or takeaway or anything, just write that all down to every single thing that you eat, all right? It's good if you can break down uh, into different vegetables as well. Now, you should only really come up maybe with uh, one or two pieces of paper. What you do then is a column on the right. You draw a line down it. And then what you need to do is write one, two, or three in that column with each food. So, for example, one means you're fine with that food. Two means it might give you a little bit of bother. Three means like, whoa, I can't touch this. I'm getting like a lot of problems with this food. So garlic, for example, could, could make you feel like a three, like feel terrible. Uh, cucumber could make you feel like a three. Um, bell peppers or capsicum could make you feel like three. Potatoes may, could make you feel like a one, no problem. Now, this is a very smart thing to do, very smart. Because if you put the date on this and you put all the foods down and grade them, and severity, you know, on how they make you feel from one to three, you know, or any, any way you want to grade one to ten, I don't care how you grade it. This is smart because now you've got a baseline. Now you know what your diet, how your diet or the foods that you were eating were affecting you because what you're going to find out in six or 12 months from now with treatment is it won't be the same. Some of the foods that are making you feel like crap in six months may not be so bad. In one year, you may be perfectly fine to eat them. I'm always keen for people to test and measure their, you know, their treatment. It's an intelligent approach. If someone gives you advice on a diet, there should be some way for them or for you to measure the response if their diet is going to work or not. So please try and grade the foods that you're currently eating. And in time, you can check that again, either monthly or you know, weekly or six monthly, or whatever you determine is the right thing for you. So when we look at the food approach, there's a couple of important things that you need to understand with Helicobacter. It is a bacteria, and it is going to live in competition with many other different kinds of bacteria. It is going to change the function of the stomach. It is going to change the way your whole digestive system works. 
I found people with H. pylori have even altered um, ability to taste, like they, certain foods don't taste right for them. And they start eating around this bug. Okay? They may eat too quick or too slow. Or, uh, they may be drinking fluid you know, uh, with their food. They may have some bad habits they've developed around this bug. They may be popping an antacid into their mouth uh, five minutes before they eat food because they don't want to get indigestion. Uh, you know what I mean? So you need to carefully think about that. And maybe if you've got this problem, you can ask your partner or friend if they notice anything about you around mealtimes, you know, burping or bloating or medic medication taking or, or things like that. So uh, some changes may need to be made. If you're currently taking an acid blocker, like a PPI or some kind of drug that coats the gut, you know, that shields it, you may need to be aware that this is affecting you quite a lot, particularly if you've been doing it a long time. You'll probably suffer from fatigue. You may suffer from uh, sleeping disturbances and other problems. You may suffer from some anxiety and depression. It is also important to say that you need to get off these drugs. You can't stay on these medications. If you really want to get the tummy well, you need to cut back these medications. One of the most important foods I like people to take to start with when they've got heartburn uh, is some raw cabbage juice. And this is something I've told many people over the years. I've had really good feedback from so. You get two or three green cabbage leaves and you juice them. You do this in the morning. And I want you to promise me that you're going to do it for one or two weeks straight without failure. Okay? Get a juicer or a blender or some machine that whizzes things up. Mash up these two or three leaves and try and come up with one or two tablespoons of cabbage juice. Now that cabbage juice needs to be consumed on an empty stomach first thing in the morning before any food hits the gut. Before you have a cigarette or a coffee, whatever you do, you have that cabbage juice. All right? Now what that does is it coats the stomach. It contains different kinds of fibers and sugars that actually feed up the beneficial bacteria. It lines the gut. But it also has a very special healing substance in it which they don't really understand what it is. It reduces inflammation. It heals ulceration. I can tell you I've got so many grateful people out there in the United States and many other countries that have come back and told me, Eric, the best thing you ever told me was the cabbage juice. I can't believe how much uh, comfort I've got in, in the gut when, since I took it on board. So some patients actually uh, do it twice a day. They do it in the morning, they do it in the afternoon. So that's up to you. But um, I want you to do it for at least 10 to 14 days straight. And if you get benefit from it, stick with it for a bit longer. Why is this important? Because eventually it's going to get you off. Nexium is going to get you off. Pepto-Bismol is going to get you off. Tums is going to get you off. All those stupid drugs. That's the whole idea is to reduce your dependency on medication. That is going to be a turning point uh, in your life when you, when you finally reduce the medication. That's the beginning of you to start getting energized again and feeling you know, alive all over again. Right? So we just spoke in the previous video, it's important to eat foods with an antibacterial component about them. Now a lot of fresh foods have this, but some of my favorite ones are onions, the onion family, leeks, shallots, scallions, spring onions, chives, garlic, any of that family. Now there's different ways you can eat this. You can steam it, bake it, boil it, juice it, stew it, whatever way you can. Try and get some of the allium family into your digestive system once or twice per day. I grow large amounts of these sorts of foods and I consume them every day. Uh, there's no um, surprise why the Greeks uh, ate these foods a long, long time ago because they were very healthy foods. People ate a lot of peas and spinach and, and allium family going back even three, four thousand years. People knew the health benefits of these foods. But leeks in particular uh, and onions, brown onions and red onions are, are very, very good for the stomach. So, um, good tip, try and have some leek soup uh, or some onions in your diet. If you're worried about gas and stuff like that, over a period of time, as the beneficial bacteria numbers increase and, the, and the, the pathogenic or the bad bacteria go down, that should disappear. You shouldn't get so much bloating or gas or things like that. All right. If you notice a lot of gas when you change your diet, it's often because you've put too much food into the gut that the bacteria you've currently got can't cope with. Have you ever driven your car uh, up a hill and pushed the accelerator down really hard, jammed it down, and the engine went, oh, oh, oh. the engine was coughing and it wasn't, and there was all smoke blowing out of the, uh, the exhaust pipe. 
that's because the amount of fuel you put into the engine was way exceeding what the, what the motor can actually do with that fuel. Now, some people's digestive systems are like that. Okay, They put way too much food in that the body's not quite ready to handle yet because it hasn't had experience with that food, for example, or it's overloaded the stomach, or it hasn't been chewed properly. So just be aware of that. Antibacterial foods, uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, also include the fresh herbs, rosemary, uh, marjoram, what are the other ones? Thyme, basil. Mints are also quite good, really, for bacteria. Lemon balm. There's many different kinds of fresh herbs that you can grow and put into salads and into your own food. These are going to work quite well. You can also put them in juices. Uh, some of these herbs juice up quite well. I find that basil is quite nice, for example, to put or basil. I think the Americans call it basil. It's quite nice in with spinach and apple and ginger and things like that. So very antibacterial. Turmeric ginger and garlic, three really good things to add to your diet. Cultured and fermented foods we spoke about, you need to pick the one that you like. I'm not a big fan of kombucha at all with stomach problems, so I push kombucha aside. Kefir, yogurt and sauerkraut are my three favorite ones, so those are the ones I would recommend that you regularly add to your diet. Seaweed is actually good for the stomach. There are certain types of seaweed like wakame is very good for the stomach. Now, why is it so? Again, these things contain certain types of carbohydrates in them that really help the stomach. What? Carne. Wakame. Is that what you say? Wakame or wakame? So, we've got a lot of wakame growing here in the South Island of New Zealand. It's, it's um, considered to be quite good for the gut. Healthy fresh foods in general are what we're, we're talking about. Green foods, and as I mentioned, the neutral. Uh, sort of grains, I sort of see them as neutral, like brown rice, buckwheat, quinoa, and amaranth. Those grains I find quite uh, acceptable for the stomach. I don't believe you should have to avoid gluten when you've got a helicobacter infection, uh, but you need to certainly be careful of the allergenic foods in your diet. So if you follow my candida crusher approach, you'll find that I put people on the MEVI diet first, meat, eggs, vegetables, yogurt, and part two is the low allergy approach. And that's what I'm going to recommend for you quite strongly because the inflammation and the antibody production in the stomach, you want to avoid cow's milk strictly with helicobacter pylori. You want to avoid cream. You want to avoid cheese to a high degree. You don't eat a lot of cheese. All cow products. In fact, be careful with lactose in general, even if it's goat milk. Just be careful of lactose-containing milks. Right? You're probably okay with almond milk or a nut milk. Eggs, you'll probably be okay with eggs unless you've got allergies. Bananas, not too good with helicobacter pylori. Chocolate, definitely not good. Alcohol, definitely not good. Sugar in any form, definitely not good. So you need to try and avoid most sugars. You can experiment with a little bit of manuka honey, as long as it's got a very high UMF factor or the unique manuka factor. If you've got a, a factor range of 20 or higher, which is quite expensive, you could experiment with a little bit of that, like two teaspoons per day. Just take that off the spoon and on empty stomach and see how that makes your tummy feel. I've had some quite incredible feedback from some patients who took two to three teaspoons of manuka honey per day on empty stomach. If you've got SIBO or candida, probably not a good idea. But if you've just got a uh, H. pylori infection or an upper digestive issue, try the manuka honey. It's going to work quite well for you. Uh, what other tips can I give you? I'll just a quick look, look at my laptop to see what other information I've got on there for you. But there are many other ways around um, H. pylori natural treatment when it comes to diet. Let's have a look here. What else have we got? Yeah, I did mention the vitamin B12. That's another important one for you to get checked out. Remember we said that in a previous video? Get the B12 checked out. Here's another interesting one you can try is aloe vera. So the plant aloe vera is grow some and use some of the chunky pulp out of the leaves in water because that's quite soothing for the whole digestive system. It works particularly well in the colon, but it's also good for the stomach. So that can really help to soothe the inflammation. So follow my candida crusher approach when it comes to the diet, and I think that's going to help you to a large degree. And that's probably the diet I'll be looking at. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, please do a little bit of writing down and measuring the response of the foods you currently have. And this will be a good yardstick for you as you improve, you'll notice that the, that the severity of the aggravation will reduce more and more over time. Thanks for tuning in.